even though we may be heading into April, having a snowstorm in State College just shows that it's still hockey season. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Tim Rogers alongside Logan Brandes and Josh Bartosik, and we are here to preview the 2022 Men's Frozen Four. Now, guys, perennial favorites in this tournament, like BU, BC, North Dakota, they're not here right now, which I think makes this tournament wide open. So, Logan, I'll bring it to you first. What has really stood out and kind of surprised you so far in this tournament? Yeah, Tim, you mentioned a lot of the teams that aren't here right now, but you know who are? Two Big Ten teams are in this Frozen Four, and they've really kind of come alive so far, these three teams that made the tournament. Everyone knows how dominant Michigan is. They're the top seed. We'll get to them later. Minnesota, they came in as a number two seed in their region, and all they've done is cruise up to get to this Frozen Four. They're the only non-number one seed to get to this point, and they did so with a big upset over Western Michigan, beating them 3 to nothing in their matchup in the quarterfinals to get to this point. And the only other upset to not feature Minnesota was Notre Dame, the third Big Ten team in this tournament. And they were able to come out and beat North Dakota, the number two seed in their region as well. And they came so close to beating Minnesota State, who was the number one seed in their region. They lost that game one to nothing. So all three Big Ten teams came really close. And even though Notre Dame didn't make it to take on Minnesota, which would have been a really fun matchup, by the way, seeing those two teams go at it again, we still get to see two Big Ten teams continue on here in this Frozen Four. And... Who knows, if Michigan wins on their side and if Minnesota wins on their side, we could see another we can see another matchup between these two teams, which would not only be a rematch of the Big Ten Championship, it would be the sixth time these teams have matched up so far this season, which I feel like a lot of Big Ten's a lot of Big Ten fans would want to see, but not a lot of fans of other teams around the country would want to see. Yeah, I don't think we need to like jump the gun there yet, but I am going to stick in a Big Ten theme, but I'm going to go with a specific player, and that's Justin Close. You know, when he took over for Jack LaFontaine, who went to sign on with the Carolina Hurricanes about halfway through the season, I was not the biggest fan. He did put up very respectable numbers for the Golden Gophers, but his vision and his rebound control were very porous, and they were easily uh, exploited during the Penn State series in the regular season and in the first matchup in the first round of the NCAA tournament when he gave up uh, three goals on 23 shots. But then he came back in that second matchup, upsetting Western Michigan, like you mentioned, Logan, with a 25 save shutout performance. So he really has shown that he can step up in the big spot. I'm not entirely on the Justin Close train yet, but he has earned a lot more of my respect than he did at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I think losing a guy like Jack LaFontaine, a lot of us thought maybe that might, might be it for Minnesota, right? But Justin Close didn't just come in and replace him. He, he took over. He, I truly think he cemented himself for that position, especially in this past tournament. And Logan, for you, I'll give you Notre Dame. But overall, I feel like the Big Ten going into this tournament, that's not surprising to me. Because I think the way that they played throughout the season, it was one of the most competitive divisions in hockey. I don't think... There's really an argument there. you got teams like Minnesota and Michigan, obviously, but Notre Dame and Ohio State were very competitive as well throughout the year. So, obviously, when there's always these surprises, there's always disappointments, very similar to uh, Logan and I's New York Islanders. So, Josh, I'll bring it to you first. Although your Carolina Hurricanes may not be disappointing you, what has disappointed you so far in this tournament? Well, they might disappoint me later, but that's a different uh, league of hockey. It's got to be Western Michigan. They were the one seed. We were really, I was especially really looking forward to the possible Michigan Western Michigan final. I don't know if anyone remembers at the beginning of the season, but uh, their matchup got canceled, and Western Michigan fans were like, oh, Michigan's just scared. We're the better team. So we don't get to see that interstate matchup and figure out who's the better Michigan team. I guess technically the Wolverines are, which I know you're going to touch on a little bit later, unfortunately. But they were, they had a top 10 offense coming into the league. They were averaging around four goals a game, and then they only scored two goals in this entire tournament, and they happened in both. The, in the first round against that narrow double uh, overtime win against Northeastern. And then you have, speak, t speaking on that offensive power that they have, Ethan Frank, the nation's top goal scorer, only had one assist in both games. He led the nation with 26 goals this year. you got to get more production out of your top stars, and they didn't get that. And so for Western Michigan, this is probably one of the last times we'll see them in the Frozen Four. This was uh, probably a very unrealistic, uh, uncharacteristic year for them. So... Really disappointing for them and their fans, especially considering they basically kind of had a home series in both games and they could not come on top against Michigan or Minnesota. Yeah, Josh, and that was the big upset in this tournament. But move, looking at a number two seed, uh, I'm going to talk about Quinnipiac here for a little bit. And the reason why I call them an upset, even though they lost to Michigan, which was rather expected, they came into this tournament with the nation's top defense. They allowed just over a goal, 
a goal per game, which only three teams in the nation have done. And what makes Quinnipiac different, their goaltender, Yaniv Perrin, he was nominated for the nation's top goaltender, which only three goalies in the entire nation are up for. So they had a lot of expectations going into this tournament, but going into their their two tournament games, they their defense is really kind of a cost them there. In their win against St. Cloud State, they allowed a lot of goals. And then they took on Michigan. They allowed three goals uh, towards the end of the third period, but in that entire game, Michigan scored seven goals on their, on their defense, kind of due to uh, a few kind of early empty netters throughout that entire game. And their defense kind of got slapped around like Chris Rock at the, um, at the Oscar Awards there. Not, just not a great showing from the, uh, overall defensively from Quinnipiac. And yes, they lost to the team they're kind of expected to lose to, but when you come in as the nation's top defense, you probably would expect to give up a little less goals or just a few less goals in the tournament. Yeah, Quinnipiac to me is always one of those schools that reminds me of a hockey school, right? So I think definitely we expected more out of their defense. I think uh, the Chris Rock, Rock joke may be a little too soon, but Josh, I, I agree with you. Western Michigan, I, I was really looking forward to see that matchup, but nonetheless, with everything settled down, we have Denver versus Michigan and Minnesota versus Minnesota State. So Logan, I'll bring it to you. Who's going to win these matchups and the entire NCAA tournament? All right, I've been alluding to it pretty much this entire segment, but you got to go with the Wolverines here. They come in, they came to this tournament as the top team in the country. They came into this preseason as the top team in the country, and all they've done the entire season has lived up to the hype. We talked about how stacked the Big Ten is, had three teams in this tournament. They won that conference. They beat Minnesota pretty handily in their uh, Big Ten Conference championship. And they came into the season with three of the top five NHL draft picks in Owen Power, who scored four assists in one of those tournament games. They got Luke Hughes and Matty Berniers as well. So there's talent all across the board. And they had so many players on that team score over 30 points, despite a few of those players leaving midseason to go play for the Olympic Games. So this Michigan team all across the board, just extremely talented. They've been battle tested all season. They played some of the top teams in the country, including I mentioned Minnesota, a decent bunch who's on the other side of this bracket. So I think just looking at all four of these teams and who has the best chance, it's, it should be Michigan's national championship to lose. See, I like to be a little different. So I'm going to take a different approach here. I'm going to go with the Mavericks of Minnesota State. Now, I really do apologize for this bad pun that's coming. I'm taking the Mavericks as a dark horse for this year's Frozen Four and the national champion. Their top five, or that, sorry, their top two in the nation in goals for and goals against per game, largely in part to two of their Hobie Baker finalists, one of those being Nathan Smith. His 50 points are top five in the nation. And arguably the best goaltender in college hockey this year in Dryden McKay leads the nation in wins, top five in goals against average and say a percentage. And also Dryden McKay, He's got a lot of really solid starts so far. In 34 out of his 39 appearances this season, he's given up two or fewer goals. One of those games, of course, was the round one game where he gave up three goals to Harvard, but they still ended up winning. And, of course, Minnesota had that little bit of scare with Notre Dame, but we know that Notre Dame and the Fighting Irish, their squad, they don't give up a lot of goals. They're a very defensive structured team. So I think Minnesota State... They've got a tough task ahead of them in Minnesota. Like I said, I'm not fully on board the Justin Close train, so I do think Minnesota State will come out on top, and they'll most likely be playing Michigan. But I'm feeling the Mavericks this year. Josh, you know me. i love to agree with you. But I'm actually going to have to go with Logan here. I think talent is what we've seen, and it takes you so far. And when you guys got guys like Matty Beneers, Owen Power, and Luke Hughes, I think that's enough for them to win the whole title. So I'm really excited to see how this plays out this year. I truly believe... Anyone has a fair chance of winning this tournament, just like I thought Penn State had a fair chance of winning the Big Ten tournament. Okay, I, I'm kidding about that last part. But I can't wait to see these matchups take place April 7th and the title match on April 9th. That will do it for this edition of Penn State Sports Night. For Logan Brandis and Josh Bartosik, I'm Tim Rogers. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great rest of your night. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Penn State Sports Night. We hope you liked that segment. And we're sure there's other Penn State Sports Night segments that you are going to love as well. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. And check us out on social media for updates and behind-the-scenes clips and pics. Follow us on Twitter at PSSNTV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all of us here at the Belisari Media Center, we are Penn State Sports Night.